Hello dear friends we just had the most incredible adventure exploring the stunning beauty of British Columbia one of the most beautiful places in the world and i cannot wait to share it with you get ready for breathtaking ocean vistas towering mountain cliffs impressive waterfalls epic trails and an almost endless list of fun activities as we embark on a breathtaking journey along the Pacific coast exploring the stunning landscapes and vibrant cities that make this region truly exceptional the pacific ocean that washes the shoreline past vancouver creates together with the mountains a dramatic scenery that will leave you in awe So friends join us on this incredible 4 day escape in this two part series where we will explore Vancouver a cosmopolitan city set in this beautiful ocean front scenery with mountains in the backdrop and then we explore the world famous sea to sky highway In this episode our focus is Vancouver the city has stunning natural beauty and a rich and vibrant urban scene We will highlight the best things to do in Vancouver in just two days. Make sure to watch this video till the end, as we also share the best day trip option to drive the magnificent Sea to Sky Highway all the way to Squamish and then to Whistler Village, an experience that we share in full details in the second part of this series. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. Our adventure began with an early morning flight from Toronto Pearson Airport. Security's done and our flight is on time. So guys, we have reached Vancouver Airport. A long 5-hour flight and finally we are now going to get our rental car. We rented our car from Enterprise at the airport and started our journey. Just collected our car from the rental place and we are on our way to explore beautiful Vancouver. Vancouver is a true gem on the Pacific coast with our clock falling back by 3 hours. We were in for an extended time outside. Our first stop had a spellbound Stanley Park, often dubbed as Lungs of the City. It is a paradise unlike any other. We are starting at the Stanley Park. You just cannot miss the sea wall. It spans the entire circumference of Stanley Park. Stanley Park will allow you to forget the stress of modern life in a heartbeat. One of the most breathtaking perspective of Stanley Park can be found at Brockton Point Lighthouse. It is the most easterly part of Stanley Park and is home to a 100-year-old lighthouse. After the Brockton Point Lighthouse, very close by is the Totem Poles and the Totem Poles are a major attraction of this seawall or the Stanley Park area. Brockton Point is also home to nine totem poles carved by a variety of indigenous artists. It takes about an hour to bike around Stanley Park while you need roughly 2 to 3 hours to walk the entire loop. Stanley Park also runs charming horse drawn carriages. While you are in Stanley Park, don't forget to visit Prospect Point Lookout from where you will get an incredible perspective of Lionsgate Bridge. The Prospect Point Lookout or the Lordens Lookout, uh, you get the best views of the Lionsgate Bridge from here. This bright green colored bridge with cruise ships passing the Burrand Inlet, sailing under the bridge with the amazing mountainous view of North Vancouver serving as the perfect backdrop, you're surely in for a visual treat the lionsgate bridge was designated a national historic site of canada in 2005 after spending some time at the prospect point we drove on the stunning bridge into the beautiful city of north vancouver which would be our home for the next two nights Lodge, which is at Capilano Road, so really very uh, convenient location. We were tired after what had been a very long day. We headed out 
for dinner at our favorite restaurant, Nando's. Almost at the end of our day one at Vancouver. Very long day, but we had a wonderful time at Stanley Park. We're wrapping up our day one. Today we woke up at beautiful North Vancouver. North Vancouver is known for hiking and skiing trails in the forested North Shore Mountains. Day 2 of our Vancouver trip, we will head to the Vancouver Harbour and all the best places in Vancouver. We will start the day today with the amazing suspension bridge at the Lynn Canyon. We ventured to the Lynn Canyon Park, home to a remarkable suspension bridge and the best part is, it is absolutely free. The Capilano suspension bridge which is very touristy. This Lynn Canyon suspension bridge is an alternative which is it is free it's just three dollars per hour uh, for the parking just a 10 minutes walk yeah. from the parking to the suspension bridge the 50 meter high Lynn Canyon suspension bridge stretches across a beautiful canyon boasting raising waters waterfalls and deep pool below so when at Vancouver make sure you have to hit one suspension bridge at least there are many Capilano being one of them but this one is my personal favorite Although the main attraction is the suspension bridge, people also enjoy hiking the surrounding boardwalks and trails. Okay, so that means Western Hemlock. Bark for Western Hemlock, a big one is like that. Douglas fir. That's the Douglas fir. Yeah. Here it's it's Western Hemlock and Douglas fir, but there's also there's also some cedar. They're they're quite different. Wonderful. Thank you okay. so much, sir. Thank you. So guys, that's the Lynn Canyon suspension bridge. Extraordinary experience. Suspension bridge, I came back to the hotel, dropped my family at the Longsdale uh, Harbour. From there, they will take the ferry, they'll wait for me. I'm going to take the bus now, so that will be a nice experience, how the public transport is. Thank you. Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. So guys, I reached my destination, Longsville Key, and now we are going to. I'm going to meet my family, and we're going to head out to the sea bus. So this is the compass pass that we have. The compass pass to um, take the Longsville Key. This futuristic-looking ferry treated us to incredible views of downtown Vancouver. The sea bus crosses the borough inlet, connecting North Vancouver to downtown Vancouver, and departs every 15 minutes during the day. It takes a short 12 minutes to cross the inlet. The sea bus runs 7 days a week, from early in the morning to late at night. After getting down at the waterfront, we next made our way to Gastown. This is the original town site from which Vancouver grew in the 1870s. The cobblestone streets of Gastown exude old world charm and house the famous musical Steam Clock. Every quarter hour, the two-ton Steam Clock whistles and shoots. Interestingly, there are only six other working Steam Clocks in the world. The clock is a major tourist attraction in Vancouver. What you see right behind me is the steam clock so it's pretty famous and at 12 noon that's where the real display starts at the gas town we did a bit of souvenir shopping i was pretty hungry and we were not too far away from the famous stand of japa dog Jappa Dog is an absolute must try if you are in Vancouver. It stands out as one of the most iconic food in the city, which is a fusion of hot dog with a distinctive Japanese flavor. Hot dog with a Japanese twist, which you can find only in Vancouver. I tried the Korobuta Terry Mayo. We then explored Canada Place at the Vancouver waterfront. The waterfront station is connected throughout the city. And from here, right at downtown, you get to Canada Place at Vancouver Port and that is exactly where you have all the cruise ships. So I am having a great time with my dad. What was your experience today? Can't believe. Can't believe he says. 
the five white sails atop Canada Place have been a Canadian icon, a recognizable landmark around the world. The Port of Vancouver's cruise terminal at Canada Place welcomes upwards of 900,000 passengers each year as the home port for many of the Alaskan cruises. The three berth terminal can service up to four luxury cruise ships at one time. This part of Vancouver is also known as the Coal Harbor. Located at the beautiful waterfront, it is home to several world-class and famous sculptures. One such is the Drop. This artwork is a long and slender sculpture in the form of a gigantic and elegant rain droplet. The drop is located at the Bon Voyage Plaza. Another interesting fact is that Coal Harbour is home to Vancouver's seaplane terminal. The terminal gives business and leisure seaplane traveler access to several of Vancouver's areas. Watching seaplanes take off and descend is a great experience in itself. Then there is the Olympic Cauldron. The other major attraction of this area, which is the famous Olympic Cauldron, an icon of the 2010 Winter Olympic Games in Vancouver, the Olympic Cauldron sits within a public plaza over the Vancouver Convention Centre. And then there is the Digital Orca, a killer whale sculpture installed in 2009, adding to the charm of the Vancouver Convention Centre. So now we are going to take our Uber and we are now heading to Greenville Island. Hi. change of plan instead of Hornby Street we are now going to David Lamb Park from David Lamb Park we are going to take the aqua bus so we are at the David Lamb Park the place where we will take the ferry to the Granville Island and you can see in front those small little ferries those are the ones that we are going to take Granville Island is a peninsula jutting out into English Bay across from downtown Vancouver once a blue-collar hub for industrial manufacturing, it has blossomed since the 1970s into one of Vancouver's most charming neighborhoods. The island is tiny, barely 35 acres, but it is home to nearly 300 thriving businesses that employ over 2,500 people. The island can be reached by boat or by a variety of options of road. One of the island's biggest draws is the sprawling Granville Island Market, which has been a foodie's paradise since its construction in the 70s. The indoor market is home to a dazzling assortment of produce stores, food vendors and several little shops selling a wide variety of locally made artisanal goods. The charm of Granville Island lies in its famous public market, open daily from 9am to 7pm and contributes to the island's appeal as a renowned culinary destination. I got my clam chowder pot pie at least. The Lee's Donuts, it's the spot. After indulging in local treats, we took the colorful aqua bus once again. It's time to the Hornby Terminus. From the marina at the Hornby, uh, the Sunset Beach is roughly 10 minutes of walk. The Sunset Beach is famous for its sunsets and then there is the Inukshuk, an Inuit monument. Inukshuk means in the likeness of a human and it's basically from, from the Inuits and they have been creating these uh, stone markers for generations. Right next to Sunset Beach is the English Bay Beach. The amazing laughter artwork is a fairly new artwork in Vancouver that is quickly becoming the city's most visited attraction. It is a collection of larger-than-life statues that are laughing and making funny gestures with their hands. People love to take photos with these statues. You cannot just, you know, put a grumpy face because it's filled with people who are laughing their hearts out. So, amazing laughter is the place to be at English Beach. A long day ended as we took an Uber back to our hotel in North Vancouver. The next two days we spent exploring the magical Sea to Sky Highway. But friends, let us cover that experience in the next and final episode. As an extension to any Vancouver itinerary, as a must to get away. 
you will be mesmerized at the famous C2 Sky Gondola at Squamish and then experience the amazing drive to Whistler, where we will stay at the Olympic Village. We will then share with you our daring 10 km hike at Joffer Lake Provincial Park to witness the amazing glaciers, an experience of a lifetime. Thanks for joining us on this adventure and be sure to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more travel inspiration. Until next time, keep exploring.